Okay, men, don't be rubbing against no nipples, especially if your girl is breastfeeding. Don't be doing it. Don't get in bed and try and touch them. Matter of fact, don't even look at them. Don't even look at them. I was like, oh, don't even think about brushing against my nipple. Don't even think about it. Ooh. Because I just had a baby and I am like, ew, do not touch me. We are not going to sexy town. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It is your girl, Brittany Jade, and I am here today coming at you guys with another Mama Mondays video. And if you can't tell by now, this Mama Mondays is featuring a special guest of the male variety. Yes, I have asked my husband to come along and be a guest on today's episode because we are going to be talking all about relationships postpartum and how they change and manifest and grow after you add your new addition to the family. And if you have not checked out our last Q&A video that we did last year, I'll have that linked in the cards for you guys, but it was a really good Q&A video and I'm really glad that Taylor decided to come on and be a guest on the show today and just kind of give us a male perspective of some of the questions that I got because I think it's really important to not only look at how like us as women change postpartum and how we feel about our personal relationships with our spouses, but also how postpartum can affect the men in the relationships as well because they're just as equal and important part of the relationship. So let's go ahead and get on into this video. Okay, so a little bit about how the video is going to go. So I'm going to talk about three areas where like our relationship has kind of been tested postpartum or where we've kind of had to like work through things together more as a couple in regards to like having children. And then we do have a couple of questions. So I'm going to try and keep this video super brief um, and just kind of get to like the bulk issues and the important questions. So we'll definitely get into all of those but I just want to talk about a few of the issues that I've noticed as far as what has changed with our relationship since having children and how you can kind of combat them so the first issue that I have is dealing with domestic duties around the house now before you have kids I know that some relationships like they have like the duties around the house like split like if you like to cook then your partner cleans the dishes or if your partner does the laundry then like you do the folding or putting away or you know one of you is like really really into the clean cleanliness of the home and how you kind of split those up when you add kids to the mix it just makes things like 10 times more what's the word what am I looking for it makes things 10 times more complicated because mom is usually like dealing with a newborn, especially if you're breastfeeding or something like that in the beginning. Um, you're both really, really tired. And this is a time where when you're dealing with adding kids and trying to keep up with your domestic duties where like lines can be blurred, bickering can double and none of the housework is getting done. So I wanted to talk about ways that we have kind of combated the splitting of the domestic duties. I think that the most important thing right now, I've been blessed to be able to stay at home and Taylor's been working a lot. And personally for me, I'm, I'm way more of the clean and neat freak and I really love taking on domestic duties. So I feel like one thing that really helps me is when Taylor comes home from work, he is like straight away like into the kids and like helping out with the kids a lot so that I'm able to tackle like cleaning up the kitchen or like finishing up dinner because normally I do all of like the cooking and cleaning because that's I'm at home and it just kind of you know it makes me feel good to do those kinds of things and by no way am I saying that like you shouldn't expect your partner to help you clean but this is just something that works for me. I enjoy cleaning and cooking, but one thing that I really like is for Taylor to come home and help with the kids, which can kind of be hard because he is working and he works like a really strenuous physical job. So it can be kind of difficult to like come home and then like automatically jump into like dad duties and you're still like smelly and sweaty and like tired and you know, like they needed like a moment to decompress too. What do you think? No, I think most of the time it's been fairly easy as long as I'm not too much of a stench when it comes to coming home after like spray days when I'm covered in all sorts of wonderful chemicals that probably aren't good for anyone to breathe. 
But other than that, and just the fact that, you know, coming home and I know one of her biggest things is the fact that you look forward to cleaning and making the house look nice and you do a great job at it. And so when I get home, it's kind of one of my things to know that, well, okay, if she wants to clean, my turn to watch the kids, have some fun. Yeah. So the biggest point to take away from this is women, make sure that you're asking for what you need from your partner. I think that men respond way better to direct requests. And then also, too, if they fulfill those requests or if they give it their all or their best shot, to make sure that you're thanking them for it after the fact. I know it can seem kind of annoying, like, why do I have to thank them when I do everything and sometimes I'm not getting the thanks in return, but I just feel like a lot of times men kind of respond better to getting directly asked, like, what it is you would like for them to do, and then a little bit of recognition after the fact. It kind of gives them encouragement to keep on with that behavior. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, parenting styles and how these parenting styles will kind of play out once you start having children, especially in terms of discipline. This is like a huge area where you really start to see like you think you're on the same page as your partner and then you have children and you realize like, oh, like we were raised in completely different homes with completely different parenting styles. Our ideas on discipline are really different and especially with like parenting methods and things like that. Like I know for instance, like the cry it out method when you're sleep training or something like that. One parent might be really comfortable with letting a baby cry it out while the other parent really just cannot handle a baby crying. <laughs> really cannot handle the baby crying and that person is dead. So what do you think, what do you think is a good way for couples to handle like finding out that they've got different parenting styles? In regards to just the different parenting styles between spouses, I think one of the biggest assets is the fact that we literally did come from two different worlds. We have two different, well, in a sense, parenting traits and skills that we picked up from our parents along the way. And now we're finding out which ones work best for us. And in terms of that, you know, we find things that maybe worked for my family that we're implementing, or maybe it worked for her family that we're implementing. But at the end of the day, it's, we don't find, we don't know until we try it. But at the end of the day, it's finding our own parenting ways because it's, well, at the end of the day, we're the parents and now it's our turn. Awesome. Yeah, um, I definitely think that the most important thing is compromise, talking with your pediatrician and doing a lot of reading together. Um, if that's something that you're interested in, if you are really set on like certain methods, like maybe like check out some books and like read them together with your spouse or like, you know, just kind of discuss different options with your partner. And then I mean, because you you might think that you're really into it, like, yes, I'm definitely gonna let my child cry it out. But it's really hard to discover like on the fourth night of crying that like your method is just not working. So I think it's all about compromising, trying things out together as a couple and being really vocal about what it is your expectations are and making sure that you're being vocal if something just is not sitting well with you or is not feeling well for you, it's not sitting well in your heart. Relationships are all about like compromising and having conversations about them. So I think that um, when it comes to like different parenting styles on things, even when it comes to like feeding and sleeping, like those are serious, but when it comes to like how we're gonna discipline our kids or the kind of philosophies we want our children to have. I think it's really important to just keep those lines of communication open and compromising when we have disagreements and just kind of going from there. And also when you're in the middle of it, like I said, if you're on the fourth night of trying to cry it out, like maybe um, that's a time when you realize like, okay, like we need to like look at different options because one or the other might like be up to their neck and anxiety and you know if one parent is really feeling suffocated or feeling like they're being pressured into choices that they don't necessarily agree with and they don't feel like they can come to you and have an open conversation that's just going to cause a rift between your relationship so that is a huge one so the next thing that i want to talk about um, in terms of how your relationship kind of changes after you have kids is how it changes in terms of you no longer having any alone time or 
uh, one on one time either with each other or just some alone time by yourself. I think that this is huge. A lot of couples like before they get children, they're so used to like being set in their own identity. Like they get to go out to the gym, they get to train for the half marathon, they're a part of all of these groups, they get to like do all of this cool stuff by themselves on the weekend or have girls night or guys night. And then when they're a couple, like they get to have this one on one, like really intimate kind of relationship. And then once you have a child, it's kind of like, especially in the beginning, all of those things kind of go away and that can really disrupt like who you think you are as a person and it can really cause a rift in your relationship. And what do you have to say about how your relationship changes when you have this new person that's kind of always around you and you don't get any one-on-one -on -one time or like alone time? How does that work? I definitely think it alters the relationship in a sense, in a good way, but in a hard way, because it, I mean, it's a test. It definitely goes from making it, well, like she said, you spend 24 hours a day with each other, you plan everything together, you do everything together, and then all of a sudden, you're like, okay, three's a charm. Now we gotta add this little one to everywhere we go and everything we do. Book starts. Pump. And you get to figure out when you have to pump. Yes. Pumping is essential. But in the end of the day, it comes down to the fact that, you know, God made us to procreate. So we do that when we have kids. They come into our lives. And they help us to become better people when we allow it. Um, I think that when it comes to, like, old activities that you used to love to do like for instance Taylor has like his meetings that he likes to go to and then for me like I was a part of the choir and that's something that I haven't returned to yet but I do think that it's really important that you pick one activity when you're out of like that when you're out of like that first three months area because that first like from newborn phase to like three, four months and maybe even like five months because you get that four month sleep regression, girl, don't forget, four months, you're not quite out of the water yet, but it's just such a haze and you're like literally caring for a newborn and it is so tough, especially if you have more than one, like if, you, if you're like us and you've got two under three, I mean, it's cray, you know, like there's no more like where they take a nap and you've got like this nice two, three hour period to yourself during the day. Like that's gone when you have more than one because they never sleep at the same time. Like right now our toddler's asleep, but my newborn is awake or he's not a newborn. He's three months old. Oh my gosh. But anyways, he's asleep and he's up right now with my mom um, so that we can record this video. Thanks mom. Um, but I think, you know, just with having two, it's really hard to get like any one-on-one -on -one time for yourself or do any activity that you like, because I personally just feel so bad, like leaving both of them alone with Taylor, um, because I know how hard it is. Cause I do it a lot. Um, but I think that the most important thing is to like pick a day or like set it up on a schedule where like, okay, like on this day, maybe once a month or twice a month or something like on this day, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get my nails done, or I'm going to go out and have a girl's night, or I'm going to go out to dinner. Or I'm going to go hang out by myself for like a couple of hours and vice versa. I think that if he wants to like go to his meetings or go to like the gym or <laughs> go to the gym, <laughs> I'm the one that goes to the gym. Um, or like, you know, do anything like that. I think that it's just important that you keep the lines of communication open and that you get it on the schedule so that you know, and you're aware and we have like things up in place to where it makes the night easy so that those things can happen. So that's the most important part is just scheduling it and making sure that you get it on the calendar so that you can have that little bit of identity for yourself and you're not feeling super run down like, oh my gosh, my entire life just revolves around this baby and like our one-on-one -on -one time is like gone and we're not we're not able to like refresh ourselves. I think everybody needs that little refresher because it just makes you way better. Like you cannot pour from an empty cup. So make sure that you're taking care of yourself and you're setting aside that time for self care. As far as date nights go, like we have not had a date night since the baby's been born. Have we? Yeah, we haven't. We've talked about it. 
We've talked about it, yes. We have talked about it and we've idolized it and glamorized it and thought about it and thought, wow, that would be so nice to just have a night, like just going out to dinner and like just talking about ourselves and not the babies and not having a baby with us. But honestly, it hasn't happened yet. So I don't really, I don't have any tips on that because um, we d it just has not happened with TJ nursing. And yet we've been sitting here for 17 minutes recording a video about ourselves. This is kind of a date. This is nice. We're both dressed up. We both look really nice. Like wow. we're not half asleep. We got some good amount of caffeine today. You do. Yeah, he's tired. So if his energy is low, I'm just going to edit a lot of that shit out. Including the S-H-I-T part. Yes including the curse word okay yeah so make sure that you just schedule some um time for yourself and then date nights i mean we'll we'll just get back to you on how that works i imagine you just schedule it the same way if you have like a close family friend who can like come over so you can go out and do something with your spouse for a little bit that just hasn't happened for us because that's just where we're at right now we only have a three month old baby so um okay so that is the three areas that i wanted to talk about so now we're going to get into some questions from you guys and y'all did not disappoint i'm excited to talk about these so of course everybody wants to know how often do you have sexy time not often it's not why you think either. What is why they think? They think it's because I just had a baby and I am like, ew, do not touch me. We are not going to sexy town. But to be honest, I think that it's just we're like tired. And like I said, Taylor works like 12 to like 14 hour days. Um, and he has like a really strenuous job. Uh, and it just does not, it's not going down right now i think we're just in this phase of life where it's not happening as much as we'd like we probably should put that on the calendar like once a week is it lame to like schedule sex i think that no i think that's honestly the only way we would do it is if we put it on the calendar and scheduled it that's where we're at right now in life like if it's not on the calendar it's not happening it's gonna be sleep i hear the baby crying yeah, and then that happens, you know, it's hard when you have a baby in your room crying, you know, looking at you like, <laughs> <laughs> what you guys doing? Mom and dad, you think y'all's about to get it? I'm about to cry, cry, cry. No sexy time for you. So somebody said sex is out. Yeah, sex is out. Hey, um, but someone said... Also, sex partum, like how do you get over that feeling of being touched out and still find the space to be physical? Um, for me, I think that like, I definitely feel like sometimes I'm just like, do not touch me. Like at bedtime, like at night, I'm just like, I have had somebody cling to me like half the day, more than half the day. So when he wants to like cuddle at night, usually I'm just like, this is my space to just like be left alone. I want to sleep on my stomach with my leg kicked up. Like I don't want anybody touching me. I just want to go to bed and like, just do not touch me. Yeah. So I think for me, I try, I try to catch myself when I do this. Like if it's like the third night in a row and I'm doing this, like I try really hard, but it's really hard, especially like breastfeeding and stuff. Like, oh, don't even think about brushing against my nipple. Don't even think about it. Oh. Why? Because it hurts. It's raw and it's mm. sensitive and it's just. Because I know that after not seeing you all day and then all of a sudden you go, don't touch me. Okay, men, don't be rubbing against no nipples, especially if your girl is breastfeeding. Don't be doing it. Don't get in bed and try and touch them. Matter of fact, don't even look at them. Don't even look at them. The nipples are completely off guard to you for the first six months to a year. I was going to say. Maybe longer if you breastfeed longer. I don't know, but I, my, my nipples are no limit soldiers right now. They are sensitive sallies. They need to be appreciated and respected and not touched or looked at. So as far as being touched out, like just try and, you know, try and make it a point to not be like this every single day of the week. Like I said, I think having physical intimacy 
on a calendar is necessary when you're married and when you just had a kid. Like it's very important to make sure that your partner still feels desired by you and attractive to you and um, vice versa it goes both ways so i think that it's really important that we try our hardest to like make that time for our partners um that's just really important and uh for us like we try to like hold hands and you know like always make sure that we're giving each other like a hug or a kiss goodbye those kinds of things i think those are just like basics as far as like um being touched out like just making sure that we're having some kind of like touch because if not it starts to feel like we're roommates real fast um so the next question that i have is do you have set days when one spouse watches the kid and the other gets time out of the house this goes a little bit back to like the individual um like individual space thing that we talked about earlier where you just want to make sure that um you get things on the calendar so i know that if i want to go to my meeting and i need him to like watch one of the kids or both the kids i just like make sure to let him know like on sunday nights we sit down and we go through like a whole week together and we kind of schedule out like okay you're doing this on this night i'm doing this on this night or something like that or we're both home this night so you know it just kind of helps us out so we just make sure that we schedule in advance and we talk about what our schedule is and i try to make sure um that like he's getting his time away from like not just being at work but getting in whatever time he can doing like the things that he likes or wants to do like i think he went to two meetings this week which is like virtually unheard of um but it was necessary for him and i'm glad that he got that time um so yeah what do you, do you have anything to add no somebody said do you find yourself physically feeling distant after birth and does the desire come back um personally i felt physically distant for like a couple of weeks just as i was trying to get like my body regulated i was so consumed with breastfeeding that like the last thing i thought about was like being desirable or desired like i think it wasn't until like maybe six weeks or seven maybe like five or six weeks postpartum where i was just like okay like i'm starting to feel like kind of normal again breastfeeding does mess with your desire um and those hormones after giving birth like really mess with you and like your hormones and like your desire and your want for physical intimacy and stuff like that so that's totally normal maybe like read up on it or something i don't know why men think that you know like two days after giving a baby you're just gonna want to give it back up and just be like sexy sexy lexi like you just had a whole human come out of your body so that's like the last thing did you just <laughs> fart <laughs> he just ripped ass i'm sitting here talking and the <laughs> fumes are just burning my nose hairs what do you want me to do hold it <laughs> Do you have anything you want to say about <laughs> physical intimacy after birth? Or like from a man's perspective, like maybe maybe the man is feeling like he doesn't have as much desire like postpartum. Like do you have anything to say about that or like any tips for like any for like the women out there? Do you think that um that low desire for men like after having a baby, like do you think that that has anything to do with having a baby or do you think that it has to do with how a woman might look after giving birth or like where do you think a lower desire in the bedroom from a man's perspective where do you think that stems from i guess both uh, the part about how man just witnessed a baby coming a whole baby like <laughs> Sorry, okay. Everything coming out, but then also just attitude, perspective, perception. Everything changes, so to speak, but it doesn't. It's just the fact that there's, well, another person because of you two that's on this planet, and they're your responsibility. But what does that have to do with sex, though? In regards to sex for a little 
I mean, human being coming out of uh, mother's body. Yeah. Body. Coming out of mother's body. It's interesting to watch. And. So basically what he's trying to say is sometimes guys, when they see a baby come out, it can make their, it can make their soldiers go from at attention to dead. Yeah. So it can just basically be hard to like, it can basically be hard for a man to see a baby come out and that can possibly have an outcome on their desire like as time goes on so sometimes it's not always the woman that is like fighting sex like sometimes it comes from the other side too so we just wanted to make sure that we touched on that so that we address everybody um but those are the questions that we have i had like several other questions just about sex in general and i feel like we talked a lot about that so if you guys have any other questions please go ahead and leave those down in the comments down below or make sure that you are following my instagram and i'll have that linked right here for you and i'll have taylor's instagram linked as well down here so that if you guys are interested in following him and seeing his day-to-day -day, you guys can definitely hit the follow button on us and, and just you know DM us any questions that you have. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up if you've stuck with us this entire time. I know this is kind of a long video, longer than I wanted it to be, but um, you're the real MVP if you stuck with us through the end. We thank you guys so much for checking out this video today and we hope that you like, comment, and subscribe to our channel, my channel. Thank you, Taylor, for coming on here and being a guest today. And I hope you guys really like this. And I'll see y'all next Monday on the next Mama Mondays video. So have a good one. Bye. Oh, hi. I don't look that bad. You look sleepy. So do you. I do not look sleepy. I look three snaps and a B formation. Fine.